Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Decisive Campaigns, Barbarossa episode number 25. So we left off, we couldn't quite finish off the last turn. We're still on it. What is this turn? Round 19, which means turn 18, in, in the way I describe it. Army Group Center. It's a good thing that we took um, some extra time for this one, because it is going to take some extra time. It's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy or roundabout statement. I'm going to start in the south. Uh, just a few clean up things. I need to free the poor 34th infantry before it's cut off. We were able to do so without sustaining too many casualties, which is good. We are fighting um, reserves in this area. And this leads us to one of the first decisions we have to make, which is how exactly to defend this. So first of all, I already moved this infantry in. I, this is going to be a long thing, because I want to talk about a few. I think that these are... It's like any one of these decisions by itself is not critical but this the big picture here i think is important to understand like what is it that tortuga is trying to do um i could I, and i i contemplated eliminating this one conscript unit it's very tempting it's low-hanging fruit i have a bigger plan which means we're going to ignore that pretty much altogether for now i'm going to put this cav back all the way to the forest over here. And you can probably already tell what's going to happen. So this unit, which is no longer really in a def good defensive position, is actually going to just fall back to the forest here, which is good defensive position and also, even more importantly, is going to maintain, you know, the 219th that we've uh, just temporarily cut off. Obviously, this is all going to be Soviet territory by the end of their turn before I even act. I want to make sure that the, they are not able to aggressively take over the the lines of fuel de delivery. That's uh, I mean, logistics are playing a big role here, right? Uh, Second Panzer Group Headquarters, Guderian himself, has got to move forward. And I guess I should take a moment at this point in time to tell you what the heck is actually going on. Because of the emergence of all these units outside of Moscow, I don't think that we're going to be able to push and take it from the north. Instead, I'm going to use... I mean, it's the same strategy I've been using everywhere since the beginning of the campaign. We're going to cut off forces, eliminate their main strength, and then hope that the push thereafter is so much the stronger, even though we've taken extra losses, because they are so much the weaker. I've been relying on that strategy and I think it's played out well for us so far, so we're going to continue it here with perhaps the biggest attempted encirclement I've ever done in this game. And that is probably what you can already see. Surrounding this entire area from Smolensk to Vyazma down to Bryansk. It's an enormous area. We're going to be doing this surround with no less than four armies. But if it pays, I mean, if it, if it, we can actually manage it, and that remains to be seen, I'm not, I'm not, I think that this is one of those Alea yakta esque moments. The die is cast, we're going for it, so we'll see what happens. We've done well for ourselves, but if this fails, I don't think it'll fail poorly, it'll just be a setback, so let's, let me not over-dramatize it. Nonetheless, I think it's a very big decision we're making, and, you know, it's not necessarily the right decision. It could mean a pretty big setback. We don't really even need to take Moscow. It's Hitler's lowest priority. But that's not the way Tortuga wants to play this. So here we go. We're rolling the dice. I've got three units that are pretty much at the attack stack limit. We're going to push north. Hopefully take a few losses, but basically I'm trading all of my remaining armor for this encirclement. After this, if the armor core just has nothing left, so be it. We're just going to live with the consequences. Which means we are just going to trade a lot of very valuable armored units to make this thing work. And everybody's going north. We're pushing the entire force. We're, and distance is everything, which means we're not going to be receiving the stack bonus from attack him from two angles that would be nice I just I mean we could so you are not able to move any further yeah you would be the one I would want to do it but you can't uh, now the only thing is we could do it with the infantry because the infantry don't really need to move forward but that means the armor is gonna have to like what am I trying to say once we attack and eliminate the we will win this attack 
Armor and infantry together probably both can do the follow-up, but um, if I send the infantry this way, we'll attack stronger in the initial attack. That has to pay enough dividends because the infantry won't be able to contribute in the second attack since they're spending all their extra extra points. Just for a 10% bonus, you know, I just don't think it's worth it. We'll take it now. We we'll lose another Panzer too. I mean, basically, like I said, let the losses pile up. Uh, the main thing right now is get these forces out of the way. We got to trade. This is where basically the, the blood is coming in. We're yeah, and they can do the fall attack. It's very good to see. I'm pushing this SS under the assumption that I can pull together some kind of forces to secure the corridor. It it can happen, especially with this nice. I think. I mean, I don't mean to compliment myself, it sounds weird, but I think that this was a um, a good move in support, moving the cav back, I mean forward in a weird way, right? But pulling them back towards the HQ to help our rear guard action, which will alleviate the 10th motorized for better positions. They can get here, for example, if we want to move them. I still like to hold the entrenchment, but I don't think the 17th Panzer here is going to be holding there. In fact, they also could move towards the corridor. I also have infantry. We don't necessarily need a two-wide corridor. I mean, things are going to get... Guderian is... is He's the linchpin of this operation. Now, he's only one of two because we're a meeting in the middle. This is not a one-sided thrust that meets the uh, you know, static front. No, both. The jaws are closing from both the top and the bottom. Let's continue. I, I'm just, I hope I have not... I am so excited about this that I'm probably talking about it in too grandiose a way. It's a lot of fun to be thinking about this and to be actually, I mean, I've thought about it for a while. Like sometimes, you know, I'm not even at my desk. I'm just thinking, oh man, that, 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 just, that, that sounds fun to do. I can't wait to do it. Um, so how are we doing with this? I did not realize we could actually, oh gosh. Well, you know, you don't plan for these kind of things, but they do potentially make themselves apparent in the middle of an action. So should I have known that there's an, a massive, is these, are these the same, like where, how did all these, where did all these reinforcements come from? Not this turn either. Cause we definitely, they lost, I don't know. All right, so we could attack again. I think I will no matter what, just to push these guys out. But I don't know if we can... Yeah, this is going to be... Well, Alea Yachta Est, as I said. We're, we're going for it, so we'll see if this works. Basically, what I really, really need is 4th Army to come back online very quickly. We need them to do some solid pushes. Mostly to keep this group from breaking open. Oh my god, I need them to shift south to defend against this massive push. I don't know. This is... Hmm. Well, that is not... That was not in the cards. I was not expecting to run across an entire army by Kaluga. Who could have foreseen it? Maybe somebody, but not me. Alright, we'll go ahead and take yet another Panzer III loss. Well, we have 50... I mean, actually, this, uh, this group's pretty well equipped. I may not... I'm not sure if I want to advance in and just take that on the chin. So we'll leave things exactly where they are from now. We definitely could set up a nice defensive position over here. We're going to have to recover from that. But look, I'm going to probably pause and rethink about all of this because that is a big revelation. In the meantime, let's shift over. We can do a little bit of cleanup. So I think the best way of handling this is you shift over here. I don't want the... Um, third panzer group units to attack this round. I mean, do as few as possible. So we'll do one here. I think these two units, it's basically their path is southeast since they are part of the southern, you know, drive from the north. But they're, um, they're gonna go through this hex anyway. Or either that or, I mean, I guess this 20th motorized doesn't have to get involved, but not getting involved would require the 19th panzer to move north. I mean, I could do that. Technically, you could move south. Actually, you all... So basically, the, the less of these units that we um, involve in this attack, the better. Because this 19th can go south, and then... Yeah, it can actually get... Is that 139? I think that... One, two, yeah, I mean, just because the way hexes work, it's very easy to avoid this hex once it's gone, so... 
Is there anybody else who can contribute? You know what? I think we're just going to say, Ninth Army, good luck to you. It's your job to take this. And, uh, you know, losses be damned. I'm sorry. We'll take more losses. <sighs> Brutal. Okay, we almost didn't even win. And probably just involving the 20th motorized, I, I was maybe a bad call. I think in hindsight, yes, it was a bad call. Or we got pretty unlucky. I mean, the end result is still looks nice, 10 to 1, but this should have been like 600 losses. Um, because I was very greedy, trying to liberate 3rd third, third Panzer Group for other actions. And you know, these guys aren't going to be able to do anything now. So you can move in here, I mean, yeah, do that. And you can't do anything else, I don't want you to do that. So, you're stuck there. But you know, the flip side of course is that these forces are now completely available to help in the attack. The breakthrough point, in my opinion, should be here. So this is the weakest force along the front. Here's another weak one, and we may also probe there, or even, I, I think I plan on attacking and opening up both these fronts. I mean, both, like breaking through on both these points. I don't think because they're in the forest that we're gonna bother ourselves with first motorized, the enemy first motorized. Uh, what we'll do is just surround them, cut them off, and then probably clean them up later. We do have to consider that a sizable force has to get through, but I mean, I think that if we can get a little just beyond Viasma, if we're within two hexes of each other on this turn, there's definitely not enough for them to squeeze out. Um, yeah, I mean, this is still going to be tough, so let's go ahead and just get it started. Again, we're going to take just, uh, I think, awful losses with my... You know, I did move this unit in already, but what if we instead do this, which will be slightly better because we'll have 10% instead of 4% bonus. And that's right at the attack stack. Let's do this instead. Clean that up. That went extremely well. But it did actually, somehow, by some miracle, we didn't even lose any tanks in the attack. Makes me very happy to see. And the follow-up attack, very important. You can't do it, but you can move where you, you know, you can move in, and we'll do the follow-up attack with these two. Because of the first one went very well, the second one should go well as well. I mean, it's a snowball tech thing. We eliminate them. Finally lost a tank, Panzer three, another one. This one only has 30 left. We have 50 in the other one. I mean, they're all low. This one only has 10, so a total of two units of Panzer fours. We know that they're gonna be taking losses. And yeah, you can see that we've been able to get pretty far. It shouldn't have been a surprise that, okay, you also, ah, good. You're mostly headquarters. So in fact, if we can, I really want to secure, I really want to secure, oh man, I really want to secure this. In fact, it's kind of a downside that this unit has been pushed back. I should have waited on this follow-up attack because that unit being there does put zone of control. I think what we're going to do is get this unit down, and we're going to start pushing on the 248th. In fact, we can do this from two angles, so 85 on both. I'll move you here, since you may not be able to move much further, and I'll move you here. And then we're going to do this attack involving everybody except for the 20th Panzer, which could, if things go poorly here, can always snake around the, the western side of the first, the enemy first motorized in the, in the forest there. So this has all been planned carefully ahead, as you probably can tell. Which takes hours of planning, really. It's just it's fun to do, but at the same time, very time consuming. Nonetheless, so far the reward, I mean the um, results are at least... God, except for that, are, uh, I think that they're speaking well for us. Um, we could do this attack like this, I like that. I want somebody else in this force. Now we don't need to hold both sides of this unit. We could let them break out to the east if we want, just give up on that and only hold one quarter on the west side of the forest. Could also do an attack on this first motorized, once that's um, surrounded, you know, that, that will eliminate it altogether. But I think the better idea here is to do the attack here. Now we have a strength in numbers as well, and so for you can move there. But the really the most important thing is to get to Vi get beyond Viasma. Who has the most chance of doing that? Um, well, definitely not you. You do. So, I guess we'll do the attack with both people, which should make this attack win more quickly and preserve some of the action points at 12th Panzer Division. Okay, that happened in round two, which means it should have only taken 
Good. 30, and you can get behind. Okay. Well, that is exactly what I wanted. You technically could attack again, but let's hold the corridor. So there we go. And I think we're committed at this point. I'm not sure. Again, I'm going to probably have to pause to figure out things over there. But boy, we, we've we almost done it. And, you know, in some sense, we don't really need to move forward more because even though they can move along the road and they probably will try to exfil, but they'll go one. That'll be zone of control. Two, that'll also be zone of control. And being here doesn't really help unless they move along the road again, but they can just move out of the plains. I don't know if they'll do that. I mean, it would be wonderful if anybody could... Do an attack? They have one garrison. Ah, they also have a motorized. That does not seem like we're going to be able to take that. Because especially because the only unit who can attack is a freaking tank. I don't like their odds. What exactly do we have here now? Okay, so it's good news. Two of those units are HQs. That's I'm happy to see that. Four of the units... Oh, good. Their readiness appears to be low. That's excellent news for the good old 10th Panzer here. I wasn't going to occupy this. I still think that they may not try to take it from me if I move there. I don't know. I, again, I need to think about this a little bit off camera. Okay, 19th Panzer, where are you going to go? Yeah, see, this is the problem. We're pretty much running out of options. We don't really have a good setup. And even the 3rd Panzer has to shift at least down here to save the 12th Panzer command radius. He's now on the front lines, which is not where we want our HQ. I don't think... Oh, you know what? I probably could attack this unit. Who has the, the stones to do it? Well, the problem is that you can, but... Who else can? Because, I mean, honestly, I want to attack this unit first. This is a very weak unit. What I probably will do is... Yeah. I think I'll just have... You move north so we can get a slight bonus. Do the attack. This will be a little bit bloody, unfortunately. Yeah, three three units for not much of them. But the readiness is now down to 14. That's the, the goal of that, was just to do exactly that. Uh, the more important thing is for you to move in. And now we can assist on the attack here. You can do the attack. Who else can do the attack, though? can do an attack and you oh this is good okay so we can get three sides <clears throat> all right can we get four oh, we could oh ha hallelujah we can actually do this so good we got four sides of surround that's great that's going to really push this unit back. And I don't mind um, this kind of attack. Wow, first of all, we broke their unit. That's that's great. Um, I don't mind doing this because in theory it might push their units back. And I think it did. No, did they go there? I don't know where they ended up, honestly. But they even though what they ended up here, they ended up with such low readiness. And I'm pretty sure that they didn't. That must be them. Down to 14 readiness. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that even if they, they... I mean, just moving back at this point. Plus our HQ is no longer on the front. That's great to see. You guys might as well move forward. You should stay there, though. And I'll say, I do want you to move forward as well. Can any of these units? Yeah, I'd rather... Um, the infantry need to be moving... Well, shoot. You can do an attack. Nobody can do a follow-up here, though. Nor there. You could do a follow-up... They are low on readiness. You're at 65, which isn't great. This is uh, one of those moments, though, where you start saying, okay, well... You know, the readiness is low enough that they're not going to have enough action points to contribute contribute meaningfully next turn. So I think I will hold off on doing anything. So... I'll just move one down there. But you'll still move in here so that you're in better position to operate. I may move them even further. Yeah, I mean, we do have some options here. I forgot, I didn't even see this 18. Oh my goodness, that's... <sighs> okay, who's able to attack the first motor? I may need to regroup here. So far, the 20th Panzer can attack. And you can attack from that side. Can anybody else assist? Uh, probably not, I'm probably... 
Well, you can attack. So we could do one here, one there, and one there. We could attack this on multiple sides. Okay, that doesn't, that's not what I wanted. What I wanted to do was get this guy involved, which I can do. And then this one from this side. Why would I do that? Well, it'd be terrible to do mo um, armor troops attacking into the forest. But the upside of that would be then the 18th motorized would have the ability to move without it's under control. Um, and then would they have enough? This is 135 out of 140, so that's not a good situation. But would they have enough to attack this? I That's pretty much still suicidal since their garrison here is gonna be at full entrenchment. So yeah, I probably need to take a moment to consider my options. You're gonna move forward, that's for sure. Probably you'll end up with the Panzer Group headquarters. That seems like a good spot for you so that you can maintain contact with those forces in the north. But anyway, I mean, it's pretty obvious now at this point. This is going to be fun to watch in the rewind, the PowerPoint slides, how we uh, took a pretty big risk here. All right, it's going to be a little painful. Well, we knew that was going to happen, though. Going to shift forces uh, this way, like so. This unit is going to come, and basically I think we should follow up against the attack on this unit, since he's weak, and we can just do that, push him out. He had 16 readiness, so honest, uh, it's 20, okay. But uh, honest to god, I, did, I strongly did not expect that kind of loss. That's as many losses as we take against like fully and ready units, so that was painful. Unless we're here, so we get a little bit more, push our zone of control a little bit further. We're going to get this unit to complete the circle. That's fine from up there. Probably you're going to move over here. There's a lot of units over there. I could attack here, but I know that they're weak. But again, I don't think they'll be combat effective next turn. So we're going to do an attack here as well. Just attack with both of these, and then we'll take the... Probably you, so that the other unit can stay there. And okay, well, that went well. Would have preferred for the ones to go well. The third Panzer group, but we're gonna take it, that's for sure. Move in the two best units. They can follow up attack. Ah, but that's against a pretty entrenched unit. So we'll just take the, the small victory. Second Army has been doing very well. I kind of think I should would prefer at this point for Ninth Army to have the artillery, but political points may not be able to allow such a thing. Lastly, over here, what are we doing? This is, uh, well, here we go anyway. Okay, so we're gonna shift the 10th motorized back into a different forest. We're gonna get the 255th to shift up here. The third Panzer is gonna close that. Now that gives us a corridor to work with. So we can shift and we can shift, hoping that this readiness is actually low enough that they don't go crazy and push me back. We'll see. I mean, these guys actually have plus 10% on the defense, which is which is nice to see. Um, but they are pretty darn weak <laughs> because they've taken so many losses. I mean, for being at 59, this actually unit, this unit actually has quite a lot. But uh, yeah, okay. Well, we'll see. They're not great on the defense, right? Uh, what else do we want to do? The 17th Panzer, I want to get this unit shifted forward because they're going to be in preparation to, to help on the attack. So let's shift them all the way up. Or should I just shift them? Now you see, you've got entrenchment. I need to hold this road too, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna shift you back like that. So we're kind of um, in a very bad situation here that in theory, this unit could come down and take the road. I am just gonna hope, in fact, maybe I should counter that very strongly. I just wanna hope that that doesn't happen. Hoping is a really bad way to form your strategies, but Feel like we just need to make it like one turn. One turn, it's the critical turn is this upcoming one. If we can hold this road in hell, you know what, F it. Even if we can't, I think we'll be okay for one turn without supply. We'll have to definitely come, turn back and re-liberate that. I'm hoping, this is all based on the assumption the 4th Army reactivates next turn, and I don't, I honestly don't remember. They, it might be one more turn for them. If that is, that's a... This was a bad time to start this, but you know, there's probably not going to be another chance to do it anyway. So that is probably where we will let things lie. I feel, I feel really good that this only has a one little choke point spot. Really wish I could have killed this unit, but they're going to get away this time. 
And you know, this unit is so much the weaker next turn. So even if they are able to chase, if, if they are moving here, that's one thing. If they move here, that's gonna be a little bit more difficult because we really can't move any further on this side. But at least if they stop here, I can move here and, you know, they'll probably just still escape next turn. I would love to stop the HQs from escaping, but we'll see if that's actually going to happen or not. Okay, here we go. End of turn. One of the, I think, most potentially impactful end turns that we've ever had since we have this almost encirclement. This almost complete encirclement, and it's, it's just going to be so critical that we hold it. And this is exactly what we're looking at. Are they going to squeeze out the gap? Most of them aren't, and actually this is huge in some sense. They are actually pushing all the way back from the front. Like, 4th Army is just going to have nothing but green space in front of it when we can actually move again. That is, that is huge. Are we going to be able to hold the gap, though? So far they haven't actually breached it. So far, so good. Okay. Um, there, that was again Army Group Center, so some movement around Novgorod. I haven't seen that, I mean, we, we haven't really seen them push out of the pocket in Army Group South either, although that one's a little bit more difficult for them to attempt anything. Um, new forces coming in from Stalino, Rostov area. Yeah, I mean, I keep, I, <clears throat> I start to think that Army Group South is done and then, you know, that happens. <laughs> There's just a wave, a new wave of forces, but I do suspect we've broken their back. I'm gonna, you know, keep with that narrative until I, I see evidence of otherwise. Okay, wow, what a... That was impressive. We, the gap is still there. I mean, we certainly have our work cut out, but we have to double down on defending that narrow corridor, which will cut them off. And has not yet cut them off, so they still have supply. Evening situation. Nothing new. Dispersion of forces in Second Army has reached such a degree that I have, I have to ask Greifenberg to take matters in, him, in hand himself. I don't know who Greifenberg is. Word has been received that Hobe Orfeld's youngest son has been killed in action. Well, war's hell. Right. Okay, so uh, the second round of reinforcements has arrived, which means that our the you know the Panzer groups that I've been kind of being a little bit more daring with a few more casualties in recent turns than previously, uh, they're going to be able to have some reinforcements. I may even want to prior deprioritize. I want to probably just make sure I prioritize Army Group Center. Okay, how do we do? How are we doing with bonuses? 16th in the north. Um, that's is that the wrong one? I can't remember who's who's up on this in the west. I think it's the wrong one. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, we have third, fourth, and second in the center, which is good that we got the Panzer Groups. We're probably going to need a lot of that. And lastly, we have 6th Army, 1st Panzer Group, and 11th Army in the south. Now, 1st Panzer Group was already dealing with high-octane fuel. They have, like, no fuel to deal with, though, so it's not like the extra action points are real. I, I would gladly change 1st Panzer Group in this case for 17th, 17th Army. Yeah, so you can see the fuel situation is is not great. Uh, it's actually not too bad though. Ten thousand. We're about to where we were last turn. Um, seven plus in the other ones is just oil for days. Lutnin Shot has no manners. There are never any please or thank yous in his speech. It's all do this now. While he can at times exercise high level people skills, most of the time he is just a rude, manipulative pig who takes full advantage of his position of authority. I overheard Oberfeldwebel, Sergeant Major, saying that we are 90 kilometers southwest of Smolensk, and that's really funny. I have been reading these messages, and I've completely forgotten where Hugo is, poor guy. So maybe we'll quickly look at it, or... Okay. There he is. Good, and 4th Army is now back on the board, and oh my goodness. Okay, well, let's get to the history. All right, history, here we go. I have been through it once in detail. It's, um, one of the themes is going to be that their headquarters are actually pretty aggressive. I'd even say heroic, uh, in an unexpected way that they're, they're kind of charging into the gap instead of leaving it. 
And that's going to be a good thing for me if I want more political points. Our political point situation is, is kind of recovered, so it's not going to be a uh, like an enormous boon. But I'm not going to say no to more political points. So we'll probably go through this fairly slowly, because uh, I think that there's a lot going on here, which is critical. Okay, so this is a unit which moved from here over to there, if I remember. I think I do. So this uh, <clears throat> kind of pulled back. It was the one that had been attacked and pushed north, so it's pretty low on readiness. But basically what we're going to see is, I mean, what we already glimpsed during the replay, which is all their units are trying to, not surprisingly, evacuate the, uh, the almost pocket. They're trying not to be completely cut off. And I feel like um, one thing I didn't see them do is shove their new forces in the way of, uh, in order to prevent a full en encirclement. Uh, their, new ready their new forces are not at full readiness, so maybe, I mean, there's probably a way we, can, we could uh, justify it to ourselves that the Soviet commander doesn't want his new green troops just getting slaughtered. But that's kind of the name of the game for the Soviet commander, so... We probably, as rational beings, can can look at the situation and judge that that probably wasn't the right move. Yeah, lots of pulling back. I mentioned this, but there's so much open space in front of the what was the front line. I mean, it's just it's weird. If you can imagine in four days the entire front being completely vacated, and you know, obviously it just can't happen like this. This this is obviously a, an abstraction, a war game, not real life, but because the forces would be oh, completely harassed if they were trying to do this in real life. You can, it, it might be able to happen on a small scale, where, I mean, maybe it, if they got lucky the entire front, it maybe it could happen this way, or the Germans didn't react, didn't have reconnaissance for four days in a row, and the Soviets were able to, you know, but, you know, this is just the nature of the game, it's not an I-go, it's an I-go-you-go, so that's the system we're dealing with here, but this entire look at the entire front. We're, we're probably going to gain territory just by having zone of control on these places um, at the start of our turn, which still counts as enemy territory for the start of the turn. Um, but it'll be beneficial. Now they do cross over here, but is this the one? I, I want to actually make sure. Oh, this is just pulling north, I think. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that guy's just pulling back. And then these forces are crossing the bridge, even though it's difficult to do. I don't mind if they do that. That's the one thing I don't want them to do, is go into that city. And that's, you know, what they're doing. But it's not surprising that they're doing the thing I don't want them to do. That's probably the best thing for them to do. Uh, there was a missed opportunity here. This road was undefended. I think that they could have squeezed in. It might have been a little aggressive. I mean, obviously, with the Northern Front liberated and Fourth Army now active, um, we can turn all of our attention to the new the new Soviet troops, but I feel like the Well, I mean, I guess our truck could have ran around to the north unless they closed it on both sides So yeah, that probably would have been Not necessary. It would have forced our trucks to have high, higher mileage more More work to get there and maybe less fuel. I don't know yeah, I think they I think they have the forces they could have just done it <clears throat> Especially because it is forest terrain there. Okay, so this is, I think they're pulling back. Nope, it's not pulling back. Well, that there is, well, let's just call this reshuffling. South of Luga. And then I think this is forces moving forward from Moscow. So we're gonna, we're gonna feel a little bit of pressure. I mean, at least they're getting some forces up there on the line. Looks like they're, <laughs> they want to go there, but they, they couldn't. We control one part of the road, which is cool. I like to imagine that that disrupts their uh, their reinforcements or supplies or, you know, something. Even though I think in reality, in the game's mechanics, the reality is it's not. But it looks, it looks nice. Okay, uh, so this is in the Swamp Territory in Army Group South. I don't know what, uh, let's just call that reshuffling as well. This is the bold maneuver. No, 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 not that, that, that's still the marsh on their side. In fact, I don't even know why they're defending that. That's the one. So they did push across, which means 17th Army, despite not having the movement bonus, is going to have to go and man the front here. I didn't expect them to come across, honestly, but 
I don't mind it at all. So we will want these hexes eventually for more of an attack on or whatever it is. The town. But otherwise, uh, yeah. And there, we can push forward on this because it, it speaks for itself. Reinforcements in the south. I think that these are conscripts, but of course, I don't remember and we can't see it here. Pulling back, and this is 18th, so 16th is the one that uh, got the bonus. Um, okay, yeah, I, I think that they were fairly aggressive moving forward against Third Romanian, which, by the way, of course, is not going to be moving this turn. Unless I mucked it up, I didn't actually verify that they are uh, they're resting. Yeah, pushing forward here, not super interesting. More interesting is this. Okay, good, so we're back to the interesting stuff. Yeah, so they are moving from Kalanen forward. Uh, that was, a, of course, the original idea was let's try to push from the north and, like, um, outflank this entire section. Uh, instead of outflanking it, we're just going to surround it. That's even better, in my opinion. But it does mean, I mean, partly because of this, that they have a pretty substantial force up north that would have prevented us from doing what we wanted to do anyway. And moving in the south, moving in the center... Oh, headquarters. Yeah, this is where I see their headquarters dart forward. Good old 24th Army there wants to be with his troops. Which, you know, you gotta respect in some sense, but from a game mechanic sense, probably uh, 43rd Army headquarters has the has the better idea. The, you know, whole thing with... What is it called? Uh, you know, the better discretion being the better part of Valor. That's the one. Okay, so a unit appeared for us there. And that's the history. Let's look at the stats. I haven't looked at this, but we always should. Oh my good! No, no! Oh heavens, goodness! Uh, despite receiving reinforcements, what the heck happened here? I guess they are. Are they? Hopefully, they're not considered in the field because this is the largest drop we've ever had. Have we? I guess we have dropped 15k over there, so we have had a larger drop. Dang it! Can't. I can't be so dramatic, but yeah, that's a pretty substantial drop. Any kind of dip right now when they're rocketing up by 200,000 forces uh, is not great to see. We're very consistent. Took out uh, 120, 100, no, let's call it 110 uh, as before, and we lost another 10k. Yeah, fully consistent. But we know now that that number will jump up quite a bit if we can close off this stuff. So that's that's next up. Starting with Army Group North and Finland first, we're going to be doing something this time. So I'm going to take a couple of these guys out, and we're going to be doing an attack against this unit here. So this one, this hex is just insane. I mean, actually, if I do an attack here, no, nah, they're not that much over the attack stack limit at 247. These guys are only at 155, despite having just so many people. Probably a lot of them are dead, but the, their readiness has already gone back up, so that's not really... can't gain any benefits of... Uh, by doing an attack... Um, against them, just like, with the hope that their low, their low strength is equal to low readiness. That does happen right after the attack, but not, you know... Well, in this case, it doesn't happen. So this hex is... It's just garrisons in the marsh. It's another marsh hex, so it's basically the same thing as what we were doing before. And I'm just gonna roll the dice that we can get a good attack in here. Three. We shattered one, that's great. Actually, I think this went very well. Boy, did it. 600 to 7600. So, I, what's the motivation? Why are you doing this now, Tortuga? Basically, I've been looking at the fact that Army Group North has... I, uh, several people have reported to me that not only are we behind historically, but we're behind their progress in their own games. I think our Army Group North has been pretty good as far as being light on casualties. But, yeah, I mean, at some point we do need to exchange bodies for, for land. Bodies for distance traveled. And that's uh, kind of the motivation of the North. Let's, let's push on the Russians, on the Soviets, I should say, in the North and see if we can deny massive reinforcements uh, that we're seeing over in the other, uh, other part of Army Group North. So this is just the Finnish trying to do their job. And I do like the fact that they can follow up that attack. Okay, that's interesting. And two of them can, which is good. 
I'm not sure if it's worth doing. I mean, I guess the follow-up attack is usually beneficial. Two to one. How is our readiness looking? 71. Okay, you, 71 and 76. So that's pretty good. Okay, we'll do it then. Could have gone better. So not as good on the follow-up as it was in the initial. Still, I think it was worthwhile doing. I mean, we have actually taken very valuable territory. And I'm going to take it, you know? I am going to take it. This probably means... I mean, this means... What does it mean? Well, these guys are potentially going to be attacked, but these are also the ones on the sustained posture. Once we have the ability to, we can now move and do a three-sided attack on the middle group. I don't know, I think that, the, that actually this was the right thing to do. Well, let's see how the Soviets react to that, and that's what we'll do for the Finnish Theater. For the rest of Army Group North, well, I, I don't know, it's kind of straightforward. We want to move, uh, we want to fully surround this group. This is one that, yeah, is going to maintain supply. I don't know how to deal with this. I'm just going to move here and, and do the full surround for the moment. I'm not even sure what we want to do with that. Uh, their entrenchment is just ungodly. It's really high. So, <laughs> I may want to pull back and... I don't know. It would be really nice if we could get the siege artillery up here. In fact, if I had a choice now, I would go back and do the road this way just to get the siege artillery up there. But you know what? Even if we just leave some troops and the other will stay in supply, but we can just let this hang out for a while. We're also going to want to put some pressure on the units over here. 35 is better than 40. And I can... I don't know if we need any more. We're at the attack stack limit. And I think that these units actually have tanks in them. Was that going to... Is it a little bit strange that they have tanks in them? Some don't, but some do. And I think that's the reason why these actually did not retreat. Is I don't think they can. We'll find out in a second. When the tanks end up in the swamp or something. <laughs> yeah, no, that I, I guess they could not retreat. That's that. And we only lost 800 for that. 20 to 1 odds. Those are the kind of odds I like. Funny, I, I, it's weird. They weren't, they weren't really armor, but... And that's fascinating that we could actually move. I think I'm going to do that. Can, can we get any assistance on that? No, obviously not. Still probably the right thing to do. Let's take a look and see who else. Probably nobody else has armor, right? Because if you have armor, you can't attack me. There's four in um, Narva itself, and there's five over here, and they can all attack me. Yikes. I still want to get there first, especially because if there's nobody over here, and I guess we'll find out. Let's just do it. Great, yeah, actually, that's really nice. So, if this hex is not reconquered by the Soviets before our next turn, it will lose the fortification. We can't take advantage of those. Um, but, the, I don't know, this is... Uh, maybe we can go around Narva. Is Narva? Narva's a gray, so we could surround it and starve it out, which is my plan for other places, including Biskov. Right, so that's pretty much all I want to do in the west. Uh, maybe not entirely true. I want to reinforce here. I really don't want to attack this... Well, I guess I do eventually want to attack it, so... So we have four units surrounding Talon, and I don't think we're going to want to do that. We're probably going to just pull back everything but two forces to guard them, and if they break out, just so be it. We are going to be much more busy, much busier, much more happy to starve out Narva, which we actually can starve out. Alright, on the east side, we have 16th Army back, and so it is a good thing that they have the little bonus there. It's quite good. We're going to move up, move up, just getting more information about what's going on in the Valdai Hills. I'm not really sure what they're doing up there, honestly. Uh, but okay. And there is one unit that can really zip on over, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do that so we can still control these two hexes. If they choose to move across, so be it, but now we at least are exerting control on... They can't... This armor can't freely move, or as freely move. 
And I surely want one unit going here. Do I want one going up there as well? Well, I mean, what is the plan right now? The plan is I want to attack this unit from many sides. So we'll do this. We can get, yeah, really good attack surrounds right now. So, and then we'll do a follow-up attack this way. But I think... What is it better? This one has tanks, and these guys don't, so what we'll do is we'll let the SS motorized attack in this case. Um, yeah, there's no other. I mean, it's a little bit weird. We might even want to shift somebody over here in as well. Just so we can get... I want this to be a devastating attack. But I need forces on this side uh, so we can push that unit out so I can start the Siege of Piskov. Alright, 150%. We weren't near the attack stack limit. We only lost one tank. Oh, that's great. Looks like we did a good amount of damage too. It was a Panzer III. And we have more of those stocking up, allegedly, right now anyway. So, yeah, I mean, 2800 doesn't look that great, but we didn't take many losses. 1600 cavalry. Cav that's okay. I think it was overall a good thing. Then the important thing is, please... Okay, that only took 70, so you do have enough to do an attack over here. In fact, what's the... Uh, can you go back? So you probably can get assistance. Yes, you can. That's what I want to do. And you're below. Okay, perfect. So let's do a, a bullish attack over here. Wow, that went poorly. Two Panzer threes, two Panzer fours. We're down from 30 to 20. Heavy infantry losses. Well, at least we inflicted 4,200 casualties, but on conscripts. I don't... Well, I, I didn't, I'm not happy with the way that turned out, but this is again the new the new side of things. I have to be content with uh, taking some losses in order to get the job done. Come on, break. Come on, break. Wow, that was terrible. Despite their 16 readiness, they still eliminated the Panzer II and the Panzer III, and only for 1,600 additional losses. I doubt very much we can go any further. Yeah. It. So probably I will move you forward, um, but I won't move anyone else. You are going to come in and position, let's see, you're at 1686. Yeah, I think we'll do something like this, and then this. Okay, so now we're still holding the front line with our fourth panzer group. But we are also getting the surround. I mean, the 16th Army should be getting us around here, so let's do that. And let's do that. Who else is able to move? Well, you can move all the way around. How many do we have here? We have one. One there. And we'll let the 59 readiness guy stay, because he needs to recover his readiness. And you got you can move all the way around. Okay, great. So we got the full surround um, from 16th Army for next turn. Just need to start filling in gaps here. Oh, that's, not, that's a little disappointing. You can get pretty far. I think I'll have you go here. You will get closer, and you will just go here, I think. Okay, and that's probably everything I want to do for this turn. I don't want those guys to move over to the west in the end. Probably gonna want to shift back and do an attack on the fields. I don't know, maybe we'll try just to move <laughs> up this way. Go around. <laughs> Can we get to the if we could just take the road to Luga, that would be that would be great. So six Panzer Division is actually in a pretty good spot. Maybe since I just moved up one of these guys, I will go ahead and assist on that one. Okay. Well, um, that's gonna be pretty much it. We don't have very much time left, 10 minutes. I don't think anything could be done, armed group south or center with that. So we'll just kick those over to the next episode. Hey, at least these are coming out, I think a little bit quicker. At least that's been the intention. I didn't do these um, decisions off camera. I guess I don't really need to with the extra time, but uh, yeah, we'll do some of these and then we'll be ready to go for the next episode where I'll probably just finish this turn, just do center and, and, uh, and south. Okay, so captured trucks, army group south. This is, this is like, oh wait, is this? Yeah, so this is so important. We need all the trucks to go to um, Wagner. I know that Von Rue said it's not going to be 
particularly happy about this, but we really need it. Especially because if you look, <laughs> we need trucks apparently. Um, I don't want to do take any more trucks away. We've already taken 10 away, so we're just going to let the army and artillery keep their supplies. But they're getting some, and then we also have another decision related to that, which we'll see in a second. Um, so we'll fight for the commendation, which will give second army's 260th a, a bonus. Um, relo relocate airfield. I'm still not going to do this. I don't know when it'll be time to do this, but honestly, I don't know if it'll ever be time. This is really interesting because I think I literally mentioned this in the turn, and I didn't realize that this was going to be an option. We do have a choice to redeploy the um, line of advancement, line of conversion for our Army Group North rail conversion. I just mentioned how it would when it would be really nice to be able to put some siege artillery on Talon, and in order to do that, we have to get this red and turn it black change over the to the German gauge. If I don't do that, the luxury that I will have is that this road will continue to change from, I mean, it'll continue its conversion, which, I mean, I guess in theory that'll help the, com the trucks out for 16th Army. I mean, sorry, for the 4th Panzer Group. Uh, I guess in theory, the eventually we can use... Um, if I go down this route, I don't think that there's a stopping point until we get to Leningrad. That might not be true. Maybe there is a stopping point. At, I don't think so, though. They stopped at Ostrov, which was very nice of them. But if we go to Riga, will they stop at Talon and give us another choice? That would be nice. Even one at Narva? Well, by that point, it'll be too late. Uh, so this is, I counted, 12 hexes from Talon to Riga, which means it's at the very minimum, if we're extremely lucky, low chance of this, four turns. And then plus one turn for the siege artillery to be actually be able to deploy there. Another turn for it to actually start doing making a difference. Plus the two, I'm going to say two, it might be three, I think it's three. But let's just say two turns um, to actually start the conversion at Riga. There's a little bit of time for them to swap over. That's like ten turns. For all those reasons, I'm not going to switch over the real conversion here. So I basically, I would love to have done that. I would love to have Siege Artillery, but ultimately I'm just going to stick probably two units here and focus on this area until we have like overwhelming victory. Maybe I can lure them out of the city so I can weaken them when they're not hugely entrenched. I mean, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I, I really don't know how to play that the, in the best way, but that's, I mean, that's how I, I plan to do it. Without, I don't have any better ideas. I, I welcome them. If anybody has better ideas, let me know. Uh, we're not going to be moving the forward supply base forward in either of these places. Um, as far as Army Group South has some real issues, which I'll have to show, but I'll show next turn. Basically, I don't know how to get the HQ where I want it um, in a place where it can both support the troops and minimize the truck problems. Truck refit. We have two truck refit decisions. Luckily, we have 48 hit, um, political points because we're going to be using them. We also have a few HQs that should be captured in center. And maybe also one at least in Army Group South. So those will end up being more political points next turn. I mean, maybe not next turn. We'll have to see how center and, uh, and south go. But uh, I want to do this order refit to fix this situation. That's going to be expensive. And then, okay, we have 37, but whoa, that's expensive. But we need to do it. 66% is just awful. Army Group South just has a really hard time. Their truck maintenance, I think, increases by like... It's a big number, 6% per turn or something. Instead of being neutral, that would be great. So we do need to order an emergency field overhaul. And I think that this is, um, I think it's the best option. So we need to, we just need to solve this problem. You can see that it's more expensive to do this if you wait than to do the original 11 point option, which we did for center. So I need to be more mindful of my political points so we have some to spare. These fun routes that was pretty happy about that. So that's going to conclude this turn because I, I don't know what cards I'll play. I'll have to do the cards at the uh, at the end of the turn. But overall, I think things look really good. I'm very excited to do center. I'm actually really excited to do south too because we have cleanup to do, more positioning, even just driving. I, I love the idea of cutting off these cities and just letting them slowly bleed, uh, or well, I guess starve is really just let them starve. I want them to become weak and then it'll be very easy to, to handle them. We already have that going on in Piskov. Unfortunately, don't have that going on in Talon because it's a red dot. But no red dots in Smolensk or Viasma, so we can do the same kind of thing as soon as we close this off. That'll be the goal next turn, next episode, this turn. Until then, thanks for watching and take care.